Too much of a good thing can be a bad thing, and so it goes with vitamin D. While it is rare to get too much vitamin D, it's not that it can't happen, and this situation, a vitamin D toxicity, has serious health consequences, says Amy Kimberlain, RDN, a spokesperson for the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics and a certified diabetes care and education specialist, CDCES, based in Miami. The most common way this happens is by taking too high a dosage of vitamin D supplements. The NIH recommends that adults ages 19 to 70 take in 15 mcg, 600 IU, and adults ages 71 and older take 20 mcg, or 800 IU. The maximum daily limit is 4,000 IU for people age 9 and older, Kimberlain says, but Harvard Health Publishing notes that an increasing number of people are taking more than this upper recommendation. Vitamin D increases calcium absorption, and therefore toxicity is marked by a buildup of calcium in the body, says Kimberlain. Symptoms of vitamin D toxicity may include nausea, vomiting, frequent urination, weakness, bone pain, and kidney pain, according to the Mayo Clinic. When choosing a supplement, check the IU on the bottle. Ideally, consult your doctor for a blood test to identify whether you need a supplement in the first place. Medline Plus notes that they can check your levels with a simple blood test. And if you do need more of the sunshine vitamin, Work with your provider to figure out the best supplement and IU for your individual health. It's called the sunshine vitamin for a reason. When the sun's ultraviolet B light hits you, it turns a chemical in your skin into vitamin D3, according to Harvard Health Publishing. Vitamin D3 is transferred from your liver to your kidneys, where it becomes an active form of vitamin D that's usable in your body. Most people get some of their vitamin D through sun exposure according to the NIH, but factors like the season, time of day, cloud cover, skin pigment, and sunscreen affect how much vitamin D a person can synthesize via the sun. For example, the NIH notes that people with darker skin aren't able to produce as much vitamin D through sunlight. People would get sufficient vitamin D with daily sun exposure, but with large cities blocking light, an increase in indoor activities, clothing covering much of our bodies, or daily use of sunscreen we don't get that natural source of vitamin D, says Dr. McTiernan. Many of us can benefit from supplementation. Experts suggest that about 5 to 30 minutes of daily sun exposure, particularly between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m., or at least twice a week, on the arms, face, legs, and hands without sunscreen usually leads to a sufficient amount of vitamin D but avoid too much sun exposure, which increases your chances of skin cancer and wrinkles by wearing sunscreen with at least SPF 15 along with protective clothing, notes the NIH. Getting your vitamin D because not every inch of your body will be covered, but it can likely be tricky still because allow your body to synthesize a sufficient amount of vitamin D. Excellent food sources of vitamin D include fish, such as 3 ounces of salmon, or 1 half cup of white mushrooms exposed to UV light, according to the NIH. But among the most common vitamin D foods eaten in the United States are eggs, cheddar cheese, fortified foods such as milk and cereal, and portobello mushrooms. These foods cover only a fraction of the daily value, DV, for vitamin D for example. One large egg offers 1.1 mcg, 44 IU, and vitamin D fortified cereal offers 2 mcg, 80 IU, providing 6% and 10% of the DV, respectively. This makes these foods only minor sources of the vitamin. Think of noshing on vitamin D foods as just one step in your quest to get enough of the sunshine vitamin. Fueling up with foods that naturally have vitamin D and those that are fortified vitamin D will provide some vitamin D. However, getting some of your vitamin D through sunlight and taking a supplement can help you reach sufficient levels, says Kimberlain. If you're feeling low, you may want to get your vitamin D levels checked. According to a study using rat brain cells published in July 2018 in Genes and Nutrition, vitamin D seems to play a role in the production of serotonin. Serotonin is a hormone that helps regulate mood and sleep per Stanford University. There are correlations between low vitamin D levels and mood disorders, research shows. What's more, a study published in September 2017 in the Journal of Diabetes Research found that a vitamin D supplement improved the mood of women with type 2 diabetes a group of people at a higher risk of depression than the general population, according to the Mayo Clinic. 
yet overall the data is mixed on whether vitamin D supplements for people with lower levels will prevent or help treat mood and psychiatric disorders. There are many causes of depression, but Cleveland Clinic notes that depression and fatigue may be a sign you have low levels of vitamin D, and getting your vitamin D in the normal range may help. Still, there are challenges with the connection. Sunlight improves both vitamin D and mood, so we wouldn't know if it's really the vitamin D improving the mood versus the sunlight improving mood, says McTiernan.